Hello there and welcome back to linuxjobber.com where we prepare you for Linux jobs. My own name is Shonmi Joseph and my email is shopopolos at gmail.com. For today we are going to be preparing you for logical volumes. So in the last video we dealt with what we call physical volume. You have to understand what the differences are between physical volumes and logical volumes. So physical volumes is when you have a device like your hard drive that you buy for your um, Dell 2950 and then you take the hard drive and you plug it into your machine that's a physical device right and then you have you make physical partitions on it so we tested all of that in the last video so you make a physical partition on it and then you mount that physical partition and you use that physical partition now as explained in class what happens is that that physical partition is so rigid that you can't change it if you ever fill up that disk it's a lot of problems trying to um, expand it or make it any more usable once that physical, um, I keep saying physical volume, I meant physical partition. So once that physical partition is used, then you have problems in changing it. So let's say for instance now, you build a room in your house. That room has walls. You build it with either sheet rock or even your concrete. Now you can't move those walls. So we have to think of ways that we can make walls that are movable. So that's what we're going to be doing with logical volumes. Watch how that is done. First, we'll go to our website here at linuxjobber.com. And then when we get to linuxjobber.com, we would go to proficiency lecture. And then in the proficiency lecture, if you go to, if you go down to, down here to the first lab, which is if you go to the first uh, lab controlling, uh, you no know, simple partitions, right? If you go into lab 109, you will see what we have done before. So we worked on that um, physical partition. Now, for this lab here, we're going to work on the logical volumes now. And before you can do physical partitions, before you can really understand it, I mean logical volumes, before you can really understand it. So let's go straight to the um this to the images to show you how everything is laid out so this video is going to be split into two right there's going to be the number one here which is just an explanation of logical volumes i'm going to try to explain logical volumes here and then next video we will then actually do the work for logical volumes and i'll show you how everything is done so first of all let me explain logical volumes to you so that you can see how it is done how it is laid out so let's look at this video right in the videos previous video we took and it, let's say for instance we took this logical this physical device here called dev sdb we added dev sdb and then we just created a partition on dev sdb and mounted that partition directly onto our file system and was able to use it in this video we're not going to do that we're going to do it differently so imagine now you have that dev sda you have a device like a hard drive in your machine called dev sda right so it's just your um let's just say for for argument's sake we call this scuzzy disk a so let's just say this is your scuzzy disk a and you have another device another hard drive in your system called scuzzy disk b so you take the scuzzy disk a and you have two partitions on there the reason i have two partitions on here is to explain to you that you don't actually need a physical device for you to make physical volume and i'll show you what visual physical volume is you can actually create you you should actually use um partitions to make your physical volumes and i'll show you in the live example of the configuration how it is done but this is just an explanation so now again you take a partition and you convert that partition to physical volume and then in this SDA, we have two partitions. You, do, you can have more than two partitions. You can have less than two. You can have however many partitions you would like. But the idea is step one in creating LVM is that you take your partition, any partition, you convert it into a physical volume so that when the machine sees it, it sees it as something like this, almost like a device, almost. Now, you do that for SDA1. You do that for SCSI disk 2. Now, the 
SCSI disk B, let's just say, for instance, now you now choose to call this, you now you choose to make to add this to your physical volume. Now, now you have possibly three physical volumes. Why are we making three possible three physical volumes? Let me explain the reason to you. Now, if you had 50 gigs in your physical device A, and then in your physical device B, you have, I mean, physical device A, you have physical device in your SCSI disk A1, right? You have 50 gigs. In your SCSI disk A2, you have 50 gigs. If, let's say, you start using this machine and you start using these hard drives, when you fill up these 50 gigs, you're going to run into problems, right? Because now you are trying to use more than 50 gigs and it does not have it. So what we're trying to do by using LVM is that we'll take everything and combine them together. And then we'll start to make our own size volumes that we like out of this. And then we can shrink those volumes and we can shrink them and then we can expand them. That's what we're trying to do to add up all of this to make one single 150 gigs drive. That's the whole purpose of LVM. We take all the drives that we have, however many, we combine all of them together or however many we like to combine, to combine them together. That's what we're trying to do with logical volumes. So now let me show you how, what we're trying, what we're doing. So now you have a physical volume A, a physical volume A1, a physical volume A2, and then a physical volume B2, B2 right? So now, what we do is that we combine everything. When you do the volume group creation, it combines everything to one big volume. So everything becomes one. And then you can take that one there, use however many of it you want, and leave the rest in there if you want. So what's happening is, is that in this case here, I decided to use 90 gigs of my total of 150. 50 plus 50 plus 50 gives me 150. And that's my 150 here. 90 up here that I've used, 60 down here that I've not used. And it's a total of 150 down here. And this is my volume group. So from your physical volume, you create your volume group. Your volume group then is a, com is a combined total of everything you have. And then you can take however many you like out of it and then create logical volumes out of it. And whatever you left, you have left sits inside your volume group. So now, again, let me explain how, I mean, let me show you what I have done, how many of it I have used. So these are my logical volumes, right? I took 50 gigs, I use it for slash home, say for instance, right? So let's just say I use it for slash home. And then I took 25 gigs, I use it for slash var because this is going to host my um, my um, documents files for my web server and then I decide you know what I'm going to host a, a Tomcat on this machine so I'm going to put another 25 gigs on Tomcat because I need it to be big so now I can carve out however many however much volume I like and start going out there to use them and they all come out of a combined total of 150 and if I had many more drives there this would be more as you can see the advantage here is that I can have any size disk that I want which I would not have been able to do if I was to mount directly now the other advantage of this is that if I was to delete this slash opt um, volume now if what will happen is that this will go right back to the volume group the 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 size of it the 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 leftover space that i created right will go will definitely just jump into the volume group and then this will be less 25 gigs right so here i will be left with 65 gigs and this will go up to 85 gigs so if i continue to delete these volumes it will continue to fill up on here so that that way i can go and use those same sizes elsewhere right so if i delete 50, 25 and 25 i have an extra 50 here and i can create another volume here now that's 50 gigabytes so now one of the other advantages of using lvm is that 
as you can see I have 25 gigs here if I want it I can simply expand this to 40 gigs so pretty much I can just come in here now and say okay because this is a logical volume and I do have a need to increase this I'm going to make it not 25 anymore take 20 gigs from this 60 so I'll have 40 left and then put 20 gigs I'll take 15 gigs from this 60 so I'll have 45 left and then I'll take the 15 gigs and add it to here and then I'll, I will then have 40 gigs of space so I just increase this taking um, taking volume taking space from this place here let me see if I can use dark color so you can see it I'll be crossing this one out because I just took because I just took space from the 60 gig so then I have 45 left because I, I took 15 out of it so now I have 45 left in here and I put the 15 in here so you can continue to increase expand and then you can continue to reduce the size of this if you were to take SDB2 directly and mount it you cannot change this 50 gigabytes you're stuck with it so that's the whole purpose of LVM I hope you understand the purpose of LVM and in the next video I will now start configuring all of this I'll show you how every single thing is done step by step all right thank you very much for watching this video like I said before my own name is Sean Joseph and my email is showpopulous at gmail.com feel free to send me a question and I'll be sure to happy to answer your questions for you thank you